Hi, this is the second part of a, a build of a mini horse a Yagi antenna for 10 metres in the CB bands uh, getting ready for spring and summer DX. If you haven't watched the first video, uh, it's best to because this won't make sense without it. If you click on the link above, you can go to the first video and at the end of the first video, there'll be a link to bring you back here. Hope you enjoy the videos. Well, it's much warmer now, all the snow's gone. These are all the parts of the mini horse laid out and it's literally in, in a position ready to assemble but I'm going to show you the the lengths uh, of the various sections uh, and how to put it together. So in measuring the plastic elements of the Yagi it's going to be the same measurements for the 10 meter amateur band and the CB frequencies it's just the length of wire that makes the the resonance different for each band. Um, so here you can see the ends of two of the main spreaders uh, this is the end of the three meter center section that's the 25 mil conduit and these are the 20 mil extensions these are in fact a three meter section cut in half and there's a lot of spare um, shoved up inside the main section that gives it a bit of strength so the length of these two and um, well all four effectively the length of the extensions are 66 and a half centimeters uh, and while we're here if i just uh, pan around a little bit and zoom in you just need to Cut a groove, you can see a groove there in the ends just to allow the wires to sit neatly on the end. So for joining the uh, end section onto the main section um, you could use an elastic band to act as a bung to stop it sliding back in. You could tape it on temporarily, uh, you could put a bolt through, I've used a, a plastic bolt uh, you can see there, um, just drill right through both, both pipes. Uh, that won't uh, cause any interference uh, to the to the antenna. Uh, I'm not sure whether a metal one would be so small, uh, but basically uh, I've drilled through. For neatness, I've got the bolt head uh, aligned up uh, with the groove, so the grooves on the side uh, and the bolts on the top. Uh, but when you do fix them, make sure where the groove on that end and the other end is actually aligned, uh, so your wire uh, runs along neatly. So that's how I've fastened the end sections on. So here on the stub mast I've terminated the coax with uh, two bolts that the elements attached to. I've got one attached already. Uh, liquid rubber to seal that joint. You could use self amalgamating tape. Um, liquid rubber just paints on and dries. And then down this end we have uh, the PL259 which is uh, sealed with self amalgamating tape with elect oop, electrician's tape on top and uh, and some liquid rubber uh, right at the tip there just to stop water ingress and speaking of the stub mast it's still hollow at the moment um, so i can put it onto the uh, the test tripod but what i've done uh, on other antennas uh, and this if i move up a bit this is my six meter mini horse um, i've used wood through the stub mast so that makes that strong enough that clamps on to the top of the main mast uh, and that wood just adds that bit of strength when you're clamping um, so there's various ways of attaching you could just go straight up with a pole and add some sort of clamp uh, but I use uh, wood and then I clamp on the outside to another pole so there's lots of different ways of using this plastic and that's the the six meter mini horse all wrapped up uh, ready to go and in terms of the wires and again I'll summarize these at the end but for 10 meters um, the reflector is um, 554 centimeters long and the fold back is 90 on both sides and the director is 486 centimeters long and the fold back is 56 centimeters. Uh, I'll give the CB measurements in the table at the end uh, but they're the, uh, the two main elements Using that uh, twin car is handy because I know the, the reflector's blue uh, and the director's brown. Although, to be fair, the blue it was a bit short, added a bit of brown on. But it's handy when you're putting the thing together uh, that you know uh, which one's which. So now for the uh, centre element. And each half of the centre element from the end to the centre of the pole, including that connector, is 185 centimetres. So there's one that side and one the other side and I'll show you the end measurements now and again these are the 10 meter measurements uh, for the center element ends the forward section is 46 centimeters and the rear section 
uh, is 22 and a half centimeters from that join. So the center element goes to the center of the dip uh, dipole. This longer piece points forward and I'll label that because that's a handy tip to know which round this goes. That's forward, that's backward. 46, 22 and a half. So we're now onto the build of the antenna and I've got some few simple tips that I use uh, when I've been uh, working portable with a six meter mini horse. Uh, and I've been doing this in the dark, in a gale, in the rain, uh, on a hilltop somewhere. So this makes things a lot easier. So this is the um, end of the reflector, that 90 centimetre return, you remember? This is taped on permanently with, with my best scotch tape. This isn't going to move. The other end's loose. Now I'll show the other end of the director. So there you can see uh, we've got a loose wire because the neat one is down that end, just the same as this, all tidied up uh, with black tape. This is the loose end that we're going to wrap around later. I use um, an obviously different tape, so when you're in the dark, uh, setting up, or more importantly packing up, you know which tape to cut. Don't cut your nice ones, cut those ready for packing up. So use a bright different tape to the one that's going to be permanent. So you need a permanent connection on the end of one end of the reflector, and a permanent connection which is down there on one end of the director. So again labelling uh, helps a lot so you know uh, what goes where. Um, so here on the stub mast, reflector in, director in. So I know the uh, longer blue uh, arm which is just out of shot there goes through there and the brown one goes through there. You'll see here I've already got one half of the center element taped up ready so basically center element goes in there and the loose trailing wire attaches onto here but I've already got a permanently attached wire here that's nipped up tight so as that arm passes through and out the other side this wire is ready to attach on there so we've got one wire on already again temporary red tape uh, for the things that I'm going to throw away and again here on this is the um, the end of the director arm with the loose wire that's just temporarily taped making sure it's all labeled up director in so that goes through the stub mast um, that's the end that goes in first and you can see here I've marked where the reflector return comes back to so you'll see this in the build so this is the other 90 return the 90 centimeter return but this one's the loose one so when I bring the wire back up here I know that's where I'm going to tape it off uh, and the same is on the uh, the director I'll bring that in shot now so here now you see them both in shot uh, that's the one we just looked at reflector in so I know that goes into the stub mast and that is the return point for the other for the wire um, you can see there the director when I tape it round comes back to there so if you think you've got the uh, say the front element goes a line across and back one of them is permanently attached you're going to run that round across bring it back around the other arm and then tape it on so you've got that front element and it's the same for the rear across one's permanently attached the other one comes round and tapes on and this is the stop points again labeling is a godsend when you're putting this thing together um, but if you follow these uh, tips um, in terms of the stub mast reflector in director in uh, you're not going to go wrong so i think i've um, i've showed you everything now um, so i'll do a build in real time uh, and i'll do a voiceover uh, just explaining what i'm doing in which order and why uh, and you'll see how quick it goes together uh, and all these marks you know the center sections if you remember through the main stub mast all these marks uh, help a lot so i'll set the camera up uh, and we'll do a build. So I've been videoed the build, I now know it takes six minutes to build the mini horse which is I think quick by anyone's standards. The first task is to push the three main poles through the holes that we've labelled up.
And now it's just a case of attaching the extensions to the three ends. The three nearest the camera are already attached. Uh, they're left like that in storage. So just a case of sliding them in, finding the holes and pushing through the, the small nut and bolt. So now we've got the poles in place, it's just a case of attaching the side pieces which are those two fishing lines that hold the ends of the driven element. Now once we've got the fishing lines in place the whole antenna becomes uh, tensioned and it's easier to add the wires. A little bit of white tape you can see dangling that's my forward marker so I know the longer end of that end of the dipole the driven element points to the front of the antenna uh, easy mistake to make and there you can see attaching the fishing line on both sides that tensions that end up nicely just in case of adding a bit of tape to that uh, center element the loose one just to make sure it's uh, tight against the pole the center element runs along the bottom of the uh, of the pole because that's how I've lined up the front and rear elements as well. And just a case of repeating on this side. And if you remember, there's the third piece of fishing line I've added, which just goes from that end of the element right the way over the top uh, to the other end of the centre pole, just to just to keep it level. So now it's a case of just getting the driven element wire that is permanently fixed to this end of the pole, pulling it across, wrapping it round the end of that pole and taping it off against the marker that shows where the return point is. And it's just a case of the same for the reflector. This is the end where it's permanently attached, the end that we didn't push through. Bring it around the back of the antenna on the other arm and uh, again pass it up the arm and tape it on to the point where the mark has been put for the return. Um, not forgetting to attach the other half of the driven element to the coax using that bolt. If you remember, one side's permanently attached, and this is the loose end being done up now. Uh, sod's law, the nut's always hard to get on the bolt, but you get there eventually.
So that's it finished, about six minutes. So these are the final, final version test on the designs I'll give at the end. And there we see bag up 29, here's the dip 1.1 at 28 and a half. So uh, 1.1 down to the bottom of 10 meters. And 1.6 in the middle of 27. So you can see there's the dip. Just where we want it. So, job done. Remember to test it at height though, don't test it on the ground. And it's it all packed up. Easy to store in the garage. Um, we could leave it outside and just take the stud mast in. I'll wait and see, uh, and see what it weighs. So if you've watched uh, the first video and all of this video, this diagram will uh, make sense and doesn't really need explaining. It's just all the poles and the measurements and the length of fishing line required. Uh, same size for both 10 and 11 metres. So ignore those initial test build lengths that I showed in video one. These are the 10 metre lengths that I've used based on that 0.75 mil insulated wire. And if you recall in video one, my original intention was to cut the antenna for the 11 metre CB band and then shorten it for the 10 metre amateur band. But the initial wire lengths I used landed me bang on 28 megahertz, which was right in the middle of both bands. Uh, so I've since shortened it uh, to work uh, in 10 metres. Now, taking into account what I've used to shorten the antenna, these are the measurements now needed to lengthen it again uh, to make it work in the 11 metre band. So this should land it bang in the middle of the CB frequencies and as you saw from that last test it's got about a 1 megahertz width in terms of low SWR so it should be no problem. And in terms of wire lengths it's always better to be too long than too short. You can always tune by just nibbling a bit of wire off at a time. Do it uniformly and by small amounts so take half a centimetre off the four corners and a quarter of a centimetre off the two ends of each side of the driven element. I hope you've enjoyed this build. Uh, hopefully it'll spur you on to try building the mini horse yourself. At less than £15 for the parts you probably don't have, it's, it's really cheap, so worth a try. And uh, if you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing uh, and hit the bell so you know when new videos are released. Thanks a lot. Bye now.